Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful cup cozy with some flowers on it. The tutorial is a rather long one as I show you how to make the cup cozy itself and the flowers individually. If you've watched my previous tutorial on how to do basic crochet stitches, then you should have no problem making this, especially the base, it's just double crochets. And the flowers, I go into a lot more detail with them than I do the actual cup cozy base and you'll see why. I've yet to show you guys how to crochet in a round, so that's why I go into more detail with these. They're also a bit more complex because they use, I think, five or six different stitches that I showed you in my first video with the basic stitching techniques. With that being said, if you have not seen my first crocheting tutorial where I show you the basic stitches that you'll need to know for this tutorial, I will have that linked below in my description box. I'm also going to put down in the description a written pattern for this tutorial if you are one that prefers to read patterns. I have not made a video on reading crocheting patterns, but if you are someone who is not a beginner and you just want to know how to make the cup cozy and the flowers that go on them, I will put down in the description box a written version. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, today we will be working with two different colors of yarn. The cream is going to be the base for our cup cozy and the yellow is going to be our flower. Of course, you can change up these for whatever color scheme you want to go with, but these are what I'll be using today. I'm not sure the brand of these yarns as I've had them for quite some time, but they are a worsted weight yarn similar to Red Heart. You can get those pretty much anywhere. You're also going to need a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle. So with that being said, let's get into it. I measured the coffee cup that I will be using for my cup cozy, and I measured its circumference to be 24 centimeters, and I tested my gauge and found that to be 35 chains. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our slip knot, make a loop, pass the yarn through, and pull. You want to put that on your crochet hook and pull that tight. Then we'll grab our long yarn and chain 35. One. I have my chain 35 and if we grab my measuring tape we will see that that comes out to about 24 centimeters. So we're good to go. Alright so the stitch that I want to use today is a back loop double crochet and for our first row we're just going to chain two extra, yarn over and then go through that third chain from the hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And your first row will just be normal double crochets. notice that your work curls like mine does that is perfectly okay you just straighten it out as you go another way that we could have done this is to connect our chain so that it makes a loop and then start our double crochets but if you do that you run the risk of twisting your chain which makes your piece come out funky and I would like to avoid that. <laughs> 
Here I am with my 35 double crochets finished. And at the end of the row, you want to chain two and turn your work. And since we're doing a back post double crochet today, that means if you look at the very top, you see there are two pieces of yarn at the top of every stitch. You will only be passing the hook through the back one. Now like normal, we are going to skip our first chain space and then go into the second one. So you'll yarn over like a normal double crochet, go through that back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And as you can see, it adds a little step back and dimension to the piece. It adds a nice little texture. So again, we're going to yarn over, go through just that back loop, yarn over once more, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And we'll go through that one more time. Yarn over, through the back loop only, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. And we'll continue that through to the end of the row. All right, here I am on my last back stitch double crochet. I just wanted to show you guys because it might be a little confusing where you're exactly supposed to put the hook. So we yarn over, and if you can see here, we just have this little bit on the end, There's, but there is a back for you to go through, so you want to go through that. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And that is your second row of crochets, your first row of back loop double crochets. You can see the texture that it adds to the piece. Now again, at the end of our row, we're just going to chain one and two, turn our work, skip the first double crochet, yarn over, go through the back loop of the second, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to just finish that for our third row. Alright, I stopped with two bath post double crochets left to go. We're going to yarn over, go through the back post, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And then we're going to yarn over, and you see this little bit on the end, we'll just go through the back loop of that one. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And that is the end of our third row, our second row doing back post double crochet. You can see how it adds the layers to the piece. It's a very nice texture. You can feel how this middle layer is raised up compared to the back two. And now at the end of that row, we are going to chain two, like always, turn our work over, yarn over, go through the back loop of our second, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And we'll just continue with another row of back loop double crochets. Here we are with one stitch left of back posts. We yarn over, go through the back loop of that little end, pull through, and we're going to finish our double crochet. And this is what the piece looks like so far. You could definitely stop here if you like the texture, but I want to add one last row just so that we have an odd number and it looks a little more visually pleasing. So you'll 
chain your two, flip your work, go through the back post of the second double crochet, and do your double crochet. And then just continue that for our last row of back post double crochets. Alright, sorry guys, my camera died, but I went ahead and I finished my fifth row and this is what it looks like so far. I have finished my last double crochet of the row and I'm just going to make a chain and then cut off my string and I want to leave enough yarn to sew this edge here to the other edge and you know, make a circle. So leave enough yarn to sew those together, I'd say about a foot or so. Alright. And then you want to just take where that chain is and just pull the yarn completely through and pull that tight. And this is what it looks like once we're done with that. So we're going to set this off to the side for the time being, and I'm going to show you how to make the flower that will go onto the cup cozy. I already made one because I want to have two on the cup cozy that I'm making, but you can make any number that you want. This is just what it's going to look like at the end. So we're going to take our corresponding yarn, and we're going to make what's called a magic ring. Take your yarn over your hand with the tail, Go around the back and bring it between the ring finger and pinky, over, flip the hand over, make an X and hold it with the pinky. Take your crochet hook, go under that first piece of yarn, grab the second, pull it under, and twist your crochet hook to where it's over the top like this. Grab your first piece of yarn again and pull it through and then that leaves you with your magic ring. Now what we're going to do with this magic ring is make six single crochets into it. So we're going to go through the magic ring with our hook, grab the yarn, pull it through again, yarn over and pull it through your two loops and that gives us our first single crochet. So that's go through the magic ring, yarn over, pull it back through the magic ring, yarn over, pull through. We're going to do that four more times. Now if you count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets. So we are going to take this tail from our magic ring and pull on it. And you see what that does to your work so far. So pick up your working yarn and we're going to find that first single crochet that we did and slip stitch into it. Now that we've got our slip stitch we are going to chain two. So that's one, two. And we're going to make a double crochet into that first single crochet and then make another double crochet into that first single crochet and that counts as three double crochets and into that same stitch we are going to do a half double crochet so it's starting to look like this and then we'll do a single crochet into the same stitch still and then a slip stitch. And you can see that's starting to make our petal shape. So into the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and then do three double crochets into that one stitch. And then into that same stitch, do a half double, then a single, 
and a slip stitch. All right, and now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, but you can see that it has gotten hidden by your petal. So you want to be careful and make sure you're going into the right stitch. Then you'll just slip stitch into there. Then into that same stitch, do your single crochet or half double crochet, three doubles. another half double, a single, and then a slip stitch. And again, our petal is hiding the next stitch, so you'll need to pull it back a little bit. And we're going to slip stitch into that one, followed by our single crochet, half double crochet, three doubles, then a half double, a single, and a slip stitch. And now we have three and a half petals. So again, you want to pull that petal back to reveal the next single crochet, and you want to slip stitch in, and continue with our petal pattern. And now we have four and a half petals, and it is a six petal flower that we're making. So we're going to pull that petal back, slip stitch into the next stitch. And now we just have to finish out that first half petal that we made. So into that next stitch, you're going to slip stitch. You're going to do a single crochet. And then a half double crochet. And then you're going to count your chains. So that's one and two, and you're going to slip stitch into the second chain of that first double crochet that we made. And that is your flower. You just need to make a chain one and cut off enough yarn to sew it onto our cup cozy and pull that through. All right, so now we have our cup cozy and our two flowers. And we're just going to take our yarn needle and we're going to first take this end piece where we finished off on the petal. We're going to thread our yarn needle. Yes, so thread your yarn needle on the piece that's coming out of the petal here and pick where you want to place it on the cup cozy. And first you want to bring the yarn under here so that it's slightly hidden you want to weave it in there so that you can't tell that there's a you know piece of string coming out of the end of your petal and I want to poke it through the back here so that we have both of our tails coming through the back end of our flower and find where you want it on here I'm going to place mine near the seam so that it will be covered up once we sew the whole piece together. You want to poke it through and bring it through to the back. Find another stitch nearby, bring it up through. And I brought mine up through the middle, so I'm going to just go around the middle, sewing my flower on, making sure that it is nice and secure. And if you bring it in through the middle like this, it's also a good way to hide your stitches from the front because it looks like it's just part of the normal crocheting. All right, 
right, I've got my flower nice and secured there. It's not going anywhere. So we want to turn around to the back. You can see where I've done my stitches. I'm going to take that piece of yarn off of my yarn needle. And we're going to thread it with the other tail. And we're going to take that other tail it's still between the flower and the cup cozy and we're just going to bring it through to the back side of the cup cozy and take that off of our yarn needle. We're going to come back to the back and see where we have the two ends. We're just going to tie a couple of knots so that they don't come undone and we don't lose our flower. After that you can just take your yarn needle again and weave in your ends. And since we're weaving in a contrasting collar, you want to be careful and make sure you're doing it in an area where you won't be able to see the contrasting collar from the front of your piece. So I'm just going to flip it over and you can't really tell that I have except for that one little area right there. So I'm going to pull it back out and just correct that. So I'm going to pull it out of that last stitch that I put it through. I'm going to check and you can't tell that's there anymore. So I'm going to continue weaving my ends in. And that is one flower sewn on and then you'll want to figure out where you want the placement of your second flower and I'm trying to place mine so that they will hide the seam once I sew the entire cup cozy together so I'm going to put mine on the corresponding side so again you want to thread your yarn needle and then just weave it in so that it's not coming out of the top of your petal And you want to bring it down towards the middle of the flower. Just like that, where it's coming out of the middle here. And you have both of your tails on the back side. So you figure out the placement that you want and bring it through to the back of your piece. And then just Sew it in like we did the other one. Now I'm just going around the center of the flower with these stitches since that's the only section of the flower that I want to secure down. But if you want to secure down the petals, of course you'll need to do that. Alright, I've gone completely around the center of my flower, so I just want to bring that tail to the back once more. I'm going to take my other tail, thread my needle, and you want to go between the flower and the cup cozy and just pass it through the cup cozy and into the back side. And then again we're just going to tie a couple of knots with these two tails and then weave our ends in. Alright, and then you'll just want to pull those ends tight and snip off your excess. And now we have both of our flowers sewn on to our cup cozy. Now for sewing the entire cup cozy together into a circle, you want to first look at your piece and you'll have two different lengths of tails. You want to take that shorter of the two and weave it in before we sew the two ends together. It'll just make the process easier and that way you're not trying to weave two tails into a curved piece. Alright, it was at this point in the tutorial where my camera actually got full and me sewing the cup cozy together 
was not filmed and I did not realize that until I was actually editing the video. But to sew it together it's a really, really simple process and I believe that if you've been able to get to the point that I actually filmed in the tutorial then you should have absolutely no problem sewing the Cup Cozy together into the loop here. That's what it looks like on the inside. You can't even see that there's a seam there because the yarn is the same cream color. But you just want to take your yarn needle, thread it with the yarn, and sew it together. It helps if you hold it. You might want to get some like pins or stitch markers to hold it in place as you're sewing. But if you have any basic sewing skills, it is a very simple process and I hope you all the best. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is a freaking cute project and I think it's great for beginners. If you enjoyed making this cup cozy or even just watching me make one, give me a thumbs up comment down below what tutorials or just content in general you would like to see next and go ahead and subscribe. Thanks guys. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.